right, this is House to Home Diary and what have we been up to this week in the extension? Because we are going for exposed steels, there is a number of challenges with that. And one of the challenges was what does one do with the paint on a, an exposed steel structure? And what we didn't realize was that when you have exposed steel like this, you have to coat it. Well, first of all, you've got this red oxide paint. And before you put the next layer on, which is called an intumescent paint, um, that's basically fireproofing the steel itself. You can either have a 30 minute, 60 minute or 90 minute fireproofing. But I'll put the link down below um, explaining the company that I went with and they normally give you the details of what kind of paint you need to put on top of these steels. Before you do that, if you have any little scuffy areas like this here, um, you need to sand that down, wash it all down and top it up with a red oxide paint like this wait for it to dry and then you put your intermittent paint on according to the instructions and it's quite um it's quite a tricky one actually and then on top of that you have your top coat and intermittent paint is not cheap just to let you know so another massive decision we decided to go with this week is to take out the chimney it's gone we really struggled on this one whether to keep it or not and in the end it it was just the easier it was the easier option in terms of the roof line and it would just make it a little bit difficult so it was worth the extra amount of money to take the chimney down and block it back up and Dean did a fantastic job he also replaced the steel along the top there which was kind of at an angle so it was all a bit awkward looking and we just tidied it all up made it nice and flat and I think he's done a fantastic job okay and that's it for the steels all the steels are done which is fantastic so I'm going to bring you up to the roof, bring you up to the scaffolding and show you at plate level and I'll explain what that means now in a second. I'm learning very a lot on this job. We are at roof height and this right here is the, um, this is the plate level. Plate level? It's a plate. Right, okay, so this is called the plate and you've got two on either side of the inner skin and the outer skin. You can, you can, you know, have your say anytime you want to. Done a template. Of what? What is this called? That's the joist. Right, okay, so they've done a template of the joist, and as you can see, I'm not going to interfere with it too much because it's still a bit wet, but they create a template to make sure that they've got the right angle <coughs> on the cutout of the joist. And this is the very first one that's been laid down. Very first, this is a 6.7 Seven. meter long piece of timber. Why did we not go for two? Because if we went for two, we would have a unsightly overlap in the middle if we wanted them exposed. Ah, um, we just changed our mind at the work. end, didn't we? Quite a lot of wasted wood because you have to overlap it by a metre. I probably should talk about the um, wall ties. Lateral, that's it called. It's called a lateral strap. Normally, on a building like this, if you were not exposing the bricks and the painted bricks like we are, you would have your wall tie on the inside of the building and that basically straps this piece of wood down to the uh, building to stop it blowing away. So they fix them onto the strap and onto the wall. Now, we obviously can't do that because you'll be able to see it. In fact, when I started looking into the manufacturers, what they kind of suggest is you put them in the cavity like that. Um, but obviously not a lot of builders do that. And that's primarily because you'd have a brick layer and then you'll have a reefer. It'd be interesting to know what everyone thinks about that, whether the right way is actually doing it in the cavity or is actually doing it on the outside. What we had to do was actually put it on the outside wall. So we had to talk to our structural engineer. Um, he'd never seen it done before. But then we also had to talk to our building control, which is an independent building control called London Building Control. And we also agreed that that was absolutely fine. As long as the lateral strap is actually protected from the weather. So these are, these are galvanized steel, so they shouldn't rust, but we are having a clad in. So because this will actually be protected, that's absolutely fine. But the most important thing from a design point of view, or there's two pointed things. One, it's safe, it's structurally sound. But from a design point of view, we won't have these straps visible on the inside. Although we did come up with a bit of a plan if we did have to have them. And we have to use stainless steel screws so they don't yeah, rust. So there's lots of things, lots of challenges. Um, we're taking day by day. And of course, on the inside, we're working really hard to try and get the old house up to scratch. Um, don't forget to join me again here on House Home Diary if you want to learn a bit more. We are going to be putting a warm roof on this, so watch out for that next instalment. Bye!